Hello everybody, welcome to Programming with Ruby, episode 17, Getting Advanced. I'm Tyler, and this video is brought to you by manwithcode.com. In this episode, I'm going to be telling you what symbols are, uh, what eval and bindings are, and what you can do with them, uh, how to run other programs from Ruby, and what exactly safe levels are, which can be very useful in some situations. So, let's get started. Symbols. Symbols. Symbols are a type of variable that are much like a string. They look like this. They have a colon in front of them and then the variable name because they are a type of variable. Now, they are like strings, but they can't be um, they can't be manipulated like strings, which may make them seem a little useless. But they do have a couple of benefits. So let's say you have a hash. And what I, from what I've shown you, a, your hash would look something like this. You would have your, your key, and you would have your value, and you know you would have maybe two for your key, and, then a, and a string for your value. Um, with symbols, they are more lightweight from strings because, say, your keys in a hash will usually never change, so you could use that. But that still doesn't make them any more useful. Why would you want to use that instead of a string? Well, first off, they're easier to type because, at least on US keyboards, the colon is right on the home row under your pinky. And also because they use less memory. Each time I've put something in double quotes here, it's created a new instance of a string. But only the first time that I use a symbol is the only time it is ever instanced. So if you're working with a lot of strings and could change them over to symbols, your program will use less memory. This isn't always a problem, but it can be. Alright, now, eval and bindings. Eval is a way of running Ruby code that is contained in a string. So say I had this string, let's put s, hello world. Even though that is what's inside the string is Ruby code, you can't actually run that. But you it's only a string, it's nothing special, but with eval, you can run that code. So if I, I did that, and I will open up my terminal and run that, so Ruby example.rb, and it runs hello world. Now you can use this in some cases, maybe uh, your, your user is entering something in, um, you're letting them run their own Ruby code, or maybe you're using it for debugging your program will stop every so often and you can run some Ruby code to see what a variable is if something's going a little funky with your program so that's a couple of the uses with eval and you can also pass bindings to eval so let's say we had a method I'm just gonna call it my method I'm gonna have an eval inside it and my method is going to take a binding and we're going to pass binding as the second parameter to eval. Now, what this means is that we can do things like, um, let's see, what's the best way to show this? Like we can have put s x, okay? Now, we'll define a variable here named 5, or with called x with the value 5, and we'll run my method binding. Even though I use binding for a variable here and here, binding is actually a method which returns the current binding, which I'll explain in just a second. So if we run that, oh, sorry, I did not save that. It puts out five. But what some of you may notice is that there is no five variable declared in my method. So let's say we just got rid of the binding, uh, just deleted it off. I taught you about variable scope earlier it'll say there's no local variable x so what a binding does is it takes the the scope and it lets you transfer it somewhere else so you can do eval comma binding and it'll work as if it was in this scope instead of in the scope of the method which again is only useful sometimes but can be useful All right. now running other programs there comes a time in every programmer's life when he needs to use an external program. Maybe he's, I don't know, needs to get the output from a program. Maybe they're automating something. I don't know. So the first method is exec, E-X-E-C. 
then you just pass the command like you are running it on the command line. Now I am on a Linux system so ls is going to list the current directory. If you are on Windows, put dir in instead dir. I'm going to save that and we're going to run that. If we do that we get um, ls runs. But what's important to note about exec is that it stops running the Ruby program as soon as you call it. So if I had put s hello world right after that nothing happened because it stops running right after it calls that but if you do want it to keep running you can use system which won't quit the program and there you can see right there hello world um, but system doesn't actually get the output of the program it only runs it so it may only be good for something like automation if you actually need the output of the program you have to use backticks which are basically sideways um, quote marks that you use like quotes and you can usually find this above the tab key on your keyboard so we'll have variable equals ls we will print that actually now just to show you see now this time it only prints out hello world if we were to print out that variable put s there we go, we can see the output of the ls method, which very cool. So, backtick is for getting the output, system would be just for automation, and exec is if you want your whatever command you run to replace your script, so your Ruby script. Alright, now, safe levels. Say, um, if you're running, say you have a Ruby, Ruby interpreter up online, maybe you have a special calculator that people can use through a web page or maybe um, maybe you just have a regular old GUI program and people can write in their own Ruby code but you don't want them to be able to wreak habit, havoc on yours or their system what do you do? well you can set safe levels which is a very nice feature of Ruby that stop certain dangerous actions from happening so there um, the way you set the safe level is by using the safe global variable which is built into Ruby you can set that to whatever you want the default is zero All right, so at zero it's basically how normal Ruby is at, um, at one you can't use environment variables uh, I haven't taught you about those but they're stored in ENV you can't use eval you can't use load require and you can't do a couple other things um, for two same thing as above but you can't as before but you can't uh, work with files at all for three every object you create is called tainted and you can only use the tainted objects which is the ones that the user creates they can't mess with anything else and on four they can do barely anything they can't uh, untaint anything they can't exit the program they can't do anything it stops that completely and that's what safe levels are if you are worried about your users or maybe you're worried about yourself and want to stop yourself from wreaking havoc on your system that's how you go about it just set the safe variable to whatever you want it's important to note though that you should set up anything you have to set up on your program before setting the safe variable because if you don't do that and say I want I need to load a file to do something it won't let me but if I do it um, to set the program up I mean but if I sorry I put that up there, then it'll work, and everything after here is under the new safe level. Yeah, whatever. And that's basically it for today. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Just symbols, why well, you should use them, eval bindings, safe levels, and running other programs. Very simple topics, but also kind of advanced. So, if you uh, like these videos, please don't forget to donate. I put a lot of time into these and some money and it'd be nice if you could give the give some money back or some support you know and if you have any questions comments or suggestions about anything related to these video tutorials or manwithcode.com uh, you can leave a comment on this page or email me at tyler at manwithcode.com I will get back to you answer your question uh, whatever your input requires me to do thanks for watching goodbye